So hello everyone. Um, welcome to the session uh, on the end of the day on Thursday uh, at OpenStack Summit Tokyo. Uh, we want to thank you for being here today at the uh, pretty much at the end of the summit. Uh, this session is Manila, an update from Liberty. So my name is Akshay Parthasarathy. I'm a technical marketing engineer at NetApp, uh, focusing on all things cloud computing and OpenStack. I'm here with Sean Cohen, Principal Product Manager at Red Hat, and Tom Bechtold, OpenStack Cloud Engineer from SUSE. So uh, this presentation is about Manila. So here's the agenda. So we'll first cover what Manila is. We'll then get into why you want to use Manila. Uh, and as part of that, we'll run through a couple of use cases for Manila. Um, there, are, there are a number of different use cases, so we're going to go through the most important ones. Uh, Sean is going to touch a bit on containers and Sahara as well, since those are hot topics right now. Uh, Liberty updates, the main uh, topic of the session uh, will, be the, will be next in the agenda. Uh, we'll then go through distributions integration, uh, specifically with Red Hat and SUSE, uh, using RHEL OSP and SUSE Cloud. Um, and um, after that, we'll go into new features that are coming up for you in Metaka. And I will do a demo of a state-of-the-art feature called Share Replication uh, at that time. Uh, we'll open up the questions. Uh, we'll open up the floor for questions after that. So uh, just to jump right into the content, uh, what is Manila? So Manila is the OpenStack File Share Services program. Manila is for uh, file shares, what Cinder is for block storage. Uh, it, pro, um, it dispenses in a self-service open REST API uh, shares to tenants of the cloud or those that even reside outside the cloud. With Manila, you can provision, for example, a one terabyte self share or a one gigabyte NFS share. Uh, do authentication with Active Directory if it were a self share and set up permissions appropriately to share networks. So we're dealing with uh, shared file systems in Manila, unlike Cinder, uh, which is just block storage. So there's a networking component that is involved. You want to make sure that um, you know when you uh, there is. You want to make sure that the appropriate networks have connectivity to your shares when you provision them. And there's a bit more magic in Manila that goes uh, that goes on behind the scenes to make sure this can all happen seamlessly for you. Um, so a bit of history. Uh, so Manila began as a, uh, the talk around Manila began in May 2014. And uh, at that time, the program was overflowing with a lot of interest and we continued working on it uh, in the six month cadence that is the norm for all OpenStack programs. In Juno, we submitted it for consideration as a core service and in Kilo, um, we uh, actually, um, uh, in Juno, we uh, introduced it as a capability. And in Kilo, we submitted it uh, for consideration as a core service. Uh, we went through cycles of con continuous integration, uh, and we uh, put in a significant number of new features and bug fixes in both those releases. So that's just the history. But let's just get to where we are at today. Um, Manila, most importantly, right now is production ready. Uh, we have a total of 14 uh, uh, storage drivers available for you. The number of blueprints or features completed is currently at uh, 51 for Liberty. Uh, this went down slightly from the number for Kilo, uh, but we also fixed a number of additional bugs. Uh, the total number of uh, bugs fixed was um, uh, 184. Uh, so uh, the number of uh, there were a number of ma major blueprints that were completed, and we'll go over all of that uh, later uh, on in the talk. Uh, some of them are share instances, REST API microversions, experimental APIs, and so on. So uh, Manila provides a number of deplo different deployment options for you, and uh, there are obvious benefits to it. It gives you a lot of flexibility to have these different deployment options. Um, the first one is you can have Manila mapped 
as a single storage virtual machine or a mon multiple storage virtual machine. Um, and what this basically means is that you can either have Manila manage the life cycle of your share servers, or you can provide Manila, uh, uh, you can let Manila manage store re storage resources on a share server that you have already set up. Uh, this is set um, uh, using the Boolean variable that you see there in the configuration file for Manila. There are also a number of different network plugins that we have. Right now, we have a total of three plugins. Um, there is the standalone network plugin, the Nova network plugin, and the Neutron network plugin. Uh, each of these can be configured with a number of uh, different uh, segmentation options. Uh, and this also gives you that flexibility that you desire when you deploy Manila. Um, so here, here's, uh, here are a couple of charts with the code contribution and the reviews. Uh, both, uh, all three of us, NetApp, Red Hat, and SUSE are major contributors to the Manila program. Uh, NetApp has been a pioneer and a leader in the Manila uh, program since its inception and continues to be doing so today. Um, for, for the Liberty release, um, we've had a number of new contributors to Manila, including CloudBase, Fujitsu, Scality, NEC, NTT, and Latvi Cloud Computing. So you may be wondering, okay, all this is fine, all the details about Manila, but why do you want to start using Manila today? Um, and the reason for that is, um, uh, the spending on file-based storage services is expected to reach north of 34 billion in 2016. And uh, this, uh, you know, the diversity of applications that we have today uh, depend on something that can be performant, something that's scalable and provides simplicity in management. Um, and as we are all aware in the OpenStack Summit, OpenStack provides that infrastructure as a service capability on which Manila can provide these file-based share services. So the question really becomes why not use Manila uh, with all the infrastructure as a service capability that's already offered by OpenStack. Here are the different use cases. Uh, we have standalone shared file services management, enterprise applications, DevOps, Sahara, containers, database as a service, automation and integration with the Manila API, heat, hybrid cloud shares, um, and many more. So we'll cover through some of these uh, in the next few slides. So the first one is standalone shared file services management. So when we think of uh, file services, uh, file file shares and the way they were dispensed in the past. You typically have one or two people in a back office. You know, when a, a request comes into IT saying that uh, I want a one gigabyte self share, a person in the back office in your IT department is gonna go ahead and dispense that self share. Um, you know, he's gonna run a couple of Perl scripts to do that and then, you know, uh, make it available for the end user. Now, the uh, problem with that is if the person decides to leave the company, then you lose all that um, work that uh, they have done with, uh, you lose the consumer interface and you also have to re reinvent the entire in infrastructure. So you want something that provides an open, ubiquitous REST API uh, that uh, Manila offers. And you want the same level of self-service that was there before and Manila gives you those things. Um, the other thing I want to point out is Manila offers this in a completely vendor agnostic framework. You can choose the storage vendor that you want. And as I mentioned, there are about 14 uh, storage backends that are supported today. The second use case we have for you is enterprise applications. So um, some of you all may already be aware. Uh, one of the major reasons why people want to switch to OpenStack today is simply because of cost. So you may be using a virtualization technology that's proprietary in nature, not open source, and it's really expensive. So if you take advantage of what OpenStack can offer for you at a cheaper uh, price, then you have a pretty compelling value proposition uh, to make to your decision makers. Um, the other reason is that Manila provides that file share service capability. You don't have to move applications over to an object store or a Swift interface. Uh, you don't have to retool those applications. So provides that capability out of the box. 
Uh, DevOps is the number one use case for Manila right now. Manila provides this uh, pluggable infrastructure, and this is enabled by something called the storage service catalog uh, within uh, Manila. With the storage service catalog, you don't necessarily need to have your archives provisioned on SSD storage. You can choose the storage that you want with your, uh, for your particular uh, use case in DevOps. So you can have your archives mapped to low performing disks if you prefer that. Analytics and containers are also uh, really great uh, DevOps use cases for Manila and Sean is gonna talk to you more about that. Snapshots and clones, these are really efficient and you can actually do them with NetApp's cluster data on top today. They typically take less than a second to complete. Uh, uh, at NetApp we say that they are space and time efficient if you choose to go with that backend. So consistency groups is a really uh, cool feature that we have in the Liberty release. So if you have a typically multi, if you have a typical multi-tiered application and you want to uh, take snapshots of that application that are consistent, you can now do that um, with consistency groups. So I'll now pass it over uh, to Tom, who's gonna take us through some new features in Liberty. Hey. Thanks, Akshay. So um, in Liberty, yeah, we implemented a lot of different features. Here's a word cloud with all the features, and we are now going through a couple of them. Um, first thing we did is we um, implemented something called share instances, which is a feature which is needed for uh, share migrations and replication. So this is only uh, facing the administrators, so end users don't see anything from that. Um, the reason why we integrated that is that, um, for example, when you migrate a share, um, you're doing that in the future with share instances, and the share which is uh, visible for the end user doesn't change. So it's basically about the UUID in the share which is not changed even if you migrate or use another replication for that share. Next one is REST API microversions. Um, yeah. Um, I think that was implemented first in Nova um, during the Kilo cycle and um, Manila adapted it and I think other um, projects are also looking into adapting that. So there was a session this morning for Cinder and so they are at least thinking about it to do that as well. Um, the thing here is um, that we can now um, yeah, in evolve the API incrementally and theoretically we can always we can also now break the API without breaking the user experience. And how it works is that the client um, just sends an HTTP header with a version he wants to use and the server um, returns the correct blob of data. Um, next one is experimental APIs. So that's also um, implemented with an extra header, so an HTTP header. And um, the thing with experimental APIs is that they can change at any time or we can remove it without any warning. So, I mean, we don't want to do that, so we want to design the APIs carefully, but um, yeah, it's an experimental API. And if you want to use it, you have to send this um, header. And in the following slide, when you see this experimental um, icon on the slide, that's an experimental API. Um, next feature we implemented is extend and shrink. So you can now extend and shrink shares via the command line interface or the, or the horizon dashboard. Um, it's not implemented in all drivers, but there is a, um, yeah, there's a documentation. So the link on the, at the bottom of the slides um, points you to the, to the documentation where you can um, have a look which uh, drivers implement this feature. Next one, consistency groups. So um, with consistency groups, you can group together different shares and um, that's very useful if you, for example, have a dat data of a database on one share and, for example, application data or log files on another share and you want to do a snapshot and you need to be sure that um, when you do that snapshot that the data of both shares is consistent. And, um, that's, yeah, that can be done with consistency groups. So the actions you can do with consistency groups is basically you, crea you create a group, um, add shares, then you can, add a you can create a snapshot from this consistency group and you can create a new consistency group from a snapshot. 
Next one is external CI for all drivers. So um, that was a huge thing for all the vendors. So thanks for, for doing that work. We have now um, yeah, CI systems for all different drivers in Manila. So um, we had to remove one driver at least, but um, yeah, it may come back when they implement um, the external CI system. Yeah, so thanks again to the vendors. Next one is oversubscription. Um, yeah, that's an easy one. So um, you can now oversubscribe your available um, capacity. Um, the only thing you need is thin provisioning in the back end. So, yeah. And um, with that, I hand over to Sean. Thank you, John. All right, as you can see, we had a very busy uh, Liberty cycle. And uh, I'm going to speed up the pace with some of the cool features that we actually added uh, to Manila this cycle. The first one I'm going to touch is actually share migrations. To those of you who know Cinder, the block storage, this is a, a very important capability to have when you do a backend. Uh, uh, so to those of you who need to sh actually migrate the data from one backend to another, this is how you do it. Uh, as Tom indicated, this is an exper experimental API, so we do want you to start test it and play with it, but don't use it yet in production. Uh, actually, we're going to have uh, a, another cycle in Mitaka to, to do a lot of the uh, uh, additional work ahead. Uh, the work right now doesn't include the retyping, so if you have a changing of protocol uh, uh, between backend to backend, it's not yet supported. Um, so how does the, back, the basic implementation works? Uh, to those of you who know Cinder, Cinder does, uh, uh, the, the idea of to, when you do share migrations, you want to leverage the backend capabilities when you do the migration so it'd be faster, right? Uh, and the basic implementation, if you don't use any uh, uh, backend capabilities, will be basically using rsync uh, to do it. And to those of you who have experience with rsync, you know the limitations of that. Uh, in Cinder, for example, uh, the, the, the fallback is using DD operation, right? So it's pretty similar. Um, another important milestone is the support for availability zones. How many of you use availability zones today in OpenStack and regions? Just raise your hand. Right. This is an important stuff. So we, we talked about mig migration as one use case. We're going to talk about replication as a, another use case. We need to be able to uh, work with OpenSAC, uh, 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 Nova uh, uh, alignment around uh, regions, availability zones, so we can actually do operation between different uh, availability, availability ability zones. So this is very important when you do migrations as well as replication. Um, and now we're going to talk uh, some of the cool things we actually done this cycle. And I'm glad to say that this is an effort we actually completed not just in Manila. Uh, and uh, in Red Hat specifically, uh, uh, thanks to uh, the colleagues of mine, Trevor um, um, and, and Ethan, that actually drove this innovation, we actually had done work both on Manila side and on Sahara to make use of the all goods that Manila brings to the table. And the main use case we're actually looking to do with uh, the shared file systems is to store the binaries uh, of the job. So when you do jobs for your Hadoop or, or Spark uh, in Elastic uh, 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 Data Processing, uh, uh, NFS is actually a very ideal for that uh, purpose. So uh, another point in Manila is uh, today you have to do the plumbing work to mount the shares when you create manually at a guest level. So what we've done is not just be able to add the uh, uh, additional drivers such as uh, NFS and, and actually in the future will be others like Lusterpress, <laughs> FFS, etc. Uh, so we, we get all the variety of file systems for uh, data processing, but also deal with the automatic mounting. So Sahara now is when you mount, uh, 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 the, we'll do the mounting for you as part of the uh, EDP process. So if you're running the EDP as a user, the mount will be happening automatically. And this is already in Liberty. So uh, to those of you who have any uh, big data <laughs> uh, uh, on your radar, please use this. And we'd like to get your feedbacks as well. So uh, you can mount NFS shares API. Uh, and another work we've done is actually uh, uh, Manila provision HDFS. So HDFS is one of the file systems that Manila supports not out of the box, right? So uh, till now we had to use Swift in Sahara. Now we can actually use HDFS, which is the native Hadoop file system, out of the box with Manila. And, uh, and this is pretty much how it looks. So on, on the right we have the data sources uh, working on the Manila provi provision HDFS. 
Uh, one limitation right now is the security. This is still a single user, so it's a non-secured operation, but this is still on our radar to uh, uh, deal in, in the next releases. So now you can actually run uh, Sahara directly uh, with Manila uh, using the HDFS out of the box. Uh, and the other use case I mentioned is, the, of course, the use of NFS shares. So in this example, actually using uh, Gluster nodes in, as a backend for exporting the uh, uh, NFS shares to uh, Sahara. Um, moving on, very hot topic, containers. So um, at Red Hat, we, we started to take a, a stab at actually what would it take to provision storage uh, uh, to Ceph. And uh, CephFS, by the way, uh, has now a, a Manila uh, driver. Uh, so being worked at, so that's not something coming up. So those of you uh, uh, using Ceph will be happy to hear that. CephFS is going to be production ready uh, in Q1 2016, which is pretty much next quarter. Um, and w we started to work with CephFS in Manila, and, and we wanted to see how it, what will be the options of actually exposing the shares uh, to uh, our containers. Uh, and there's several approaches actually that we end up. So first of all, in, in general, using Manila, exposing file uh, shares into containers is much easier than uh, doing the plumbing work in, in, in block, right? Because you can simply bind a share into the container namespace, simply as that. Uh, however, it doesn't end there because we need to deal with security and we need to deal with performance. We need to uh, deal with the whole life cycle of attaching and detaching the share to the container. Uh, this is why we started to look at different approaches of actually doing it. Uh, and we started uh, uh, mounting, as I said, the, the CephFS in different options. And, and uh, we're now looking at using VertiFS uh, to do the plugin work. So we're looking at uh, different options available within uh, 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 Nova. And now we actually uh, mapped another use using VSOX. Uh, uh, VSOX is, is, is actually a protocol introduced by VMware. Uh, and that we can, we believe we can actually use here. It simplifies the work with containers because it introduces the Manila share as a, as a black box to containers. So uh, it simply, it's both benefits from performance and the, the security aspects. Uh, there is further work, of course, to, to work in, in Nova, and there's actually design sessions currently going, and I think the last hour was specifically on this topic. So uh, keep it under the radar. It's uh, more news to come, right? We're doing all the experiments right now. And with that, I've showed you everything we just did in this release. We want to give you a taste and how we're going to use it, right? So great, you, you've done all this work. We want to start play with Manila. Give us Manila. So we're going to start with SUSE integration, and then I'll follow up with the Red Hat one. Uh, um, Tom? Yeah, so I'm um, going to show you a short video about the integration of Manila in the current SUSE version, which is open, uh, SUSE OpenStack Cloud 5. And um, so Manila is their tech preview, and in the next SUSE version it will be fully supported. And um, so the controller is HA, and we are supporting NetApp drivers, and you can use other drivers as well with a custom backend. Um, yeah, so for deployment we use Crowbar, um, which is based on Chef. Um, so, and Crowbar uses something like bar clamps to deploy um, a single component of OpenStack. And um, so I'm having a, a ready cluster and um, just showing two minutes how to install Manila and how it works. Well, so here we go. That's the overview. We have a couple of nodes. We have um, two clusters, one for the services and one for the network. And um, yeah, now we have all the services already installed. We are creating a new so-called bar clamp for Manila. Um, so Manila can have multiple backends in parallel. And, he, we, um, and that's also supported in, the, yeah, in Crowbar. So um, we are creating a new um, backend here for, for NetApp with a single um, virtual machine storage backend. So, adding some parameters. You remove the 
so there is a default backend. I removed that, and um, here's an example how to add custom drivers. So you basically um, yeah, you give it a name, and then you you can use the driver class here and add um, just key value pairs which are added to the to the configuration file. So to manila.conf. Um, but yeah, we are not using that here. I'll just remove it again. And um, at the bottom, you um, you assign the roles um, to the nodes. So um, we are going to remove the defa default assignment, and now we are um, just using the services cluster, which is based on Pacemaker. And um, yeah, at the Manila controller there, and the Manila share services are added to two different nodes. And then we deploy it. Um, I think I, yeah, I removed the last, um, so the next two minutes, because we don't want to see, or we don't want to wait two minutes for, for nothing. Um, and that's the um, user interface. So Manila is also um, integrated in Horizon. There is an extra project which is called Manila UI that's integrated. Um, we create a share type here, which is needed before you can create a share itself. And um, yeah, then I think we create a share and um, that's it basically. So it's just about integration, what's, what's curr currently available. So, creating the share, and that's it. So with that, I give over to Sean again for the Red Hat demo. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Tom. So, uh, moving to RHEL OSP, uh, RHEL OSP uh, 7 is actually, uh, let's see how I get out of this first. Oh, all right, sorry. All right, so let's start the demo. So uh, we've integrated uh, Manila into RHEL OSP 7. Uh, uh, RHEL OSP 7 Manila is a tech preview still. Uh, and we also integrated, as you can see, the UI plugin that Tom mentioned that was introduced in the Kilo cycle upstream. Um, so here we're basically going to create a share type. By the way, th th whatever you see you're seeing here is actually already supported in the new OSP director. We have the new deployment tool in RHEL OpenStack 7. Uh, a and both NetApp and Gluster are supported out of the box. Uh, when you deploy uh, uh, with director, which is the big news for the customers. Uh, so now you can start with it. So basically what do we do, create a share type. So I can create a share type for NetApp driver, for Gluster driver, uh, HDFS, uh, 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 use case uh, uh, is one of them that you can see. And then I go and cr simply create a share. In this case, I'm creating a WordPress uh, share, giving it a description, and then pretty much go and select the relevant uh, workload. In the same case, here I'm actually going to select showcasing GlusterFS, but if I was do a Sahara uh, uh, workload, I would basically choose HDFS, for example, or NFS if I want to use it for the job binaries that I showed earlier. Uh, we need to map uh, the relevant size. In, the, in this case, it's the Gluster uh, uh, type, so I need to match the size that I actually provisioned on the Gluster server and just give it the relevant the metadata information or decide if I want to mark it as visible, uh, for example, and then simply just create the share, simply as that. So the, the Manila UI is pretty much very easy and intuitive, as you can see, across the board. Uh, uh, and as soon as the share is created, you can go uh, uh, and, and look at the, the list of share created. Uh, and there's a link, you can open the link and see the export information of the share and then basically use that to export it to the Nova instance. Um, so pretty straightforward uh, uh, UI and of course everything we're doing here can be done in the Manila uh, client as well, right, in CLI. Um, so that's pretty much it. All right, and with that, uh, after we see what's available today, and as you can see, we, we showcased a lot of features that are already available during the, the Liberty cycle. Uh, by the way, uh, last point regarding the Red Hat, Red Hat uh, OpenStack Platform 8 uh, is going to actually have a full support for um, uh, Manila out of the box. Um, and uh, uh, one of the slides actually I missed is just to talk about this one real quickly. Uh, and we have done tight integration, as I mentioned, with the deployment tool. So out of the box, you can select the relevant uh, cluster or in NFS and, and NetApp drivers. 
And one of the things we're doing to get uh, Manila production ready for customers is we're going to initiate the certification program. So all the vendors in the crowd, uh, now you can, uh, the, the beta is coming up, Real SP8 beta is coming up actually next month, and you can start working and, and, and get your uh, plug-in. As you see, you have right now 14 drivers already uh, 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 for Manila, and our work is actually to make sure that the, when you plug Manila to your Rel OpenStack, it will be good to go. Um, uh, all right, so let's jump to Mitaka. Mitaka was a very, uh, uh, we, uh, as you know, we have a very uh, uh, intensive uh, design sessions and a lot of the design sessions are actually uh, completed. And now we can give you a quick look of what's coming up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the big things on the plate for us is to complete the cycle, meaning we need to deal with the mount automation itself. The we don't, so when you create a mount, it will be automatically mounted on the, on, on the guest. And that's something uh, we want to solve. Uh, rolling upgrades is a big thing in OpenStack in general. There's a cross-the-board uh, uh, effort in all of the services right now to get to a more seamless upgrade process. Uh, we're using version objects, uh, uh, and Manila is, 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 of course, is part of this effort, and this effort is going in Cinder, in Nova, et cetera, and, of course, we, we want to get OpenStack more robust. Uh, more work around export location metadata, and one big item Again, on the plate, actually we have two big items here in the list, uh, is Manila quality of service and uh, the share replication that we're going to demonstrate. Uh, if you look at the Cinder metrics for everything you can do in the driver, uh, uh, so uh, the only thing we're missing right now after we got the, the migration in is quality of server and replication. And believe it or not, Manila and Cinder has a feature priority or, uh, uh, alignment already. Right? This, it, it's like Manila or steroids, right? <laughs> we, we really got uh, far. So what's Manila quality of service in, in two words? Uh, those of you who know quality of service uh, in other areas, by the way, Neutron now in Liberty supports quality of service as well. It's basically allowing the Manila admin to create uh, 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 service levels around IOPS, bandwidth, latency right because it's one thing to get yeah great here's your share yeah on demand it's cloud fashion use it but w once you have like thousands of shares and you have a lot of shares going out of control maybe you need to start managing your share and adding quality of service here and this is how we actually deal with this problem uh share migration loose ends uh, we got a lot of more work to, to, to do because we found issues in the, uh, uh, as, as you know, the code is still experimental uh, and uh, retyping, for example, is not there yet. Um, and uh, the next thing on the plate is actually sure application. Uh, um, and before we just hand it over uh, uh, to my colleague, actually, I just want to note that the API is now here and it's uh, experimental and we're actually calling vendors to start and, and getting drivers so we can get uh, uh, share application going. And of course, the biggest thing in terms of use case for share replication is disaster recovery, right? Uh, we want to be able to have replication between uh, uh, backend and backend and between zones as you, we, we discussed. All right, uh, by the way, we'll be there, here later at the end. So if you have any questions regarding what's coming up and or the things we, we've done in, in Liberty, come uh, and ask us a question. I'm not sure we're gonna have time after the demo. All right, let's go. Thank you, Sean. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about a state-of-the-art feature called Share Replication. This is coming up in Metaka. Uh, the code is already pushed upstream, so you can uh, go ahead and check out the upstream code on GitHub if you would like and see the details there. So uh, well, one of the things that uh, enterprises and even small businesses these days are looking for is non-disruptive operations. And the way you achieve that is through high availability. If you wanted to achieve high availability uh, within uh, an availability zone, and Sean touched on availability zones earlier, it's basically a data center. You can think of an availability zone as a data center. If you want to achieve a high availability within a data center, the way you do that is you provide clustering of your storage controllers. You can do that with cluster data on tap today, NetApp's cluster data on tap today. You can cluster the storage controllers together and if one of the storage controllers were to fail, uh, maybe loss of power, loss of network connectivity, then it fails over to the other storage controller. But this actually leads to the next question. What if the whole data center goes down, maybe due to loss of power? Now, in that case, we need to have, that's where share replication comes in to provide high availability. Um, let me now talk, take you through a demo for this. So 
let's take a look at the third demo we have. So we're showcasing Manila disaster recovery over here, so available in mid-2016. Uh, we have two availability zones, um, and there are no Manila shares right now. Uh, we don't have any Manila replicas right now either, share replicas right now either. Uh, we have implemented this extra spec called replication, and uh, I'm just showing that uh, extra spec over here, extra specification. So um, what we have done is we have listed the share replicas. We have created a share and listed the share replicas. We had one replica in that case. Um, at this point in time, we are looking at the cluster data on tap through Net, uh, NetApp's on-command system manager and just making sure that the share IDs do match. Now, if you have thousands of shares, it's important to match your share IDs appropriately, and that's what this is showing. So now that we have matched the share IDs, just for verification, we're going back and listing the share. Uh, we are going to allow access to the share uh, because each share that you create in Manila has to be specified with an access list to allow access. So we just did that. Um, we are uh, creating a directory to mount the share and then we are going to mount it. This is an NFS share, so we mount it with the NFS protocol. So we're just making sure that the share is mounted at this point in time. It looks like it is mounted. So we're placing a couple of files in the share. And uh, the first file is a text file that just says this is some content and the second file is a 100 MB uh, zeros file. So let's now actually get into the actual feature, which is we are creating a replica in the second availability zone. And what we do that using the command share replica create. So let's go back and list the different share replicas. And at this point in time, we see that we have two different share replicas, one in the first availability zone and, the, and one in the second one. So we're just waiting until the two rep and the, until the second replica is in sync with the first replica. Switching back again to make sure that in this case the NetApp storage backend um, uh, share IDs do match. You don't necessarily need to do this in your environment, uh, but you know if you have a very large deployment, you it's a good idea to check with your storage backend. Right, now that we have verified the two shares, uh, the share and its replica, uh, we can go ahead and actually promote the share replica and make sure that the data in the second replica is consistent. Um, and we have just promoted it. Uh, let's go ahead and list the share replicas and let's wait for them to get back in sync. So it takes a couple of seconds for, uh, for, for that to happen. So we see that there's been a replication change. We see that the first replica is out of sync and then it's gonna go back to in sync. At this point in time, the two shares are in sync. And we can go back and mount the share replica in the second availability zone and make sure that um, the data is still there. So we see that the share is mounted and um, if we just do a directory listing, we see that both the files are in the share. So that concludes the demo. Um, so here's how you get involved with Manila. All the resources are over here, uh, available on GitHub and the Wiki and Launchpad. If you want to also um, uh, contact us, feel free to get on IRC uh, on the channel that is mentioned over here. We have weekly meetings on Thursday at 1500 UTC. Uh, the websites for NetApp, Red Hat, and SUSE OpenStack are mentioned here. If you want any information on NetApp in particular, it's http netapp.github.io. Um, 
Manila related sessions, there have been a few sessions that have been completed already. Uh, please go ahead and uh, watch them on YouTube if they're of interest to you. There is a meetup tomorrow uh, that is happening. And uh, of course, feel free to attend that as well. So at this time, I would like to invite um, Tom and Sean to come over uh, to take any questions. We'd like to thank you for staying with us till the end of the day on Thursday. Uh, please do submit your feedback uh, through the tool, uh, through the iPhone app or Android app, whichever platform you use. Uh, thanks for staying with us. Any questions you have, we're ready to take them. Yes. Just a, just a second. The microphone is coming. Your way. So when I create a share from uh, one tenant, can I use this same share from another one? The beauty of you want you want to take that? Or, yeah. So Manila actually allows you to do uh, multi-tenancy as well. That's the, one of the big use cases that we actually sh actually showcase earlier. So the quick answer is yes. But again, you need to uh, uh, specify the tenant's uh, uh, permissions, right, uh, for the share. But so uh, if you were to provision an NFS share, what you can make sure is you can set the access policy uh, for the network to be sufficiently, um, it, to allow access to the tenant network on the second uh, tenant that you're interested to have access to the share. And that would- it's at the networking level, all right? Sorry. At the networking level, I have to share, to give Yes, the you need to set the access rule okay. for that share. Thank you. Uh, in Manila, so when you, you will have to do a Manila create to create the share, and then you'll have to do, I think it's an access allow, to allow access to that share. Yeah. All right, yes. Uh, can you pass the mic? Um, as far as I understand, what you described is how to create a share. Um, how do I actually mount it inside of a VM? Is that automatic as well? I do so I define I, the mount yeah. point and it's done? Or do I have to log into the VM or have to configure so, FS tab? Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, right now you have to log in and do the mount. Uh, but one of the features we're working for Mitaka is actually to do the mount automation. Uh, as I also mentioned, this is already supported now with Sahara. <laughs> so Sahara does the work uh, for you automatically out of the box. So. Yes, at the end, John. So you mentioned um, one driver that had been dropped, and I think that's the GPFS driver, is that right? Um, is that dropped for Liberty entirely, or uh, there was a blocker on, on uh, you you're saying it was failing CI or something like that, because that's... Um so there wasn't external CI for the GPFS driver, but so now it's add it back. So that's not the driver we dropped. GPFS is in Liberty. GPFS is in Liberty. Yes. Okay, cool. That's it. Thanks. Yes. Sean, uh, it's a Red Hat question. So um, with secured multi-tenancy on containers, you touched upon it, it, it should work. Um, but you also talked about tech preview currently. Yes. So which OpenStack version will work with which Red Hat version? If we, I work for Veritas, and we are working on a Manila driver, which is not part of those 14. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on CI/CD. But once we get there, how do we make sure that the secured multi-tenancy will work with Manila on Red Hat? With which, what is the right combination? So first of all, as I mentioned, uh, Manila is tech preview uh, in RHEL SP7. Uh, so uh, probably by the time you get RHEL SP8, this is coming up, which is going to be fully supported. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, the beta should be uh, soon available for RHEL SP8. So RHEL OSP8 with Red Hat 7.1? Yes. Okay, thanks. thanks. Um, hey, I've got a question. I'm running NetApp 7 mode. Can I use the Manila driver? Um, so that I have to get back to you. So most of our uh, work is on cluster data on top. Is that right? Right. It's, it's cluster data on top, would no, be. No seven mode. It's not right now. Okay, thanks. Probably not. Uh, more questions?
All right. I, I want to answer one question that was asked earlier. Uh, does their uh, share replication already support consistency groups? Uh, the answer is not yet. Uh, but yes, it's something that we have uh, on the radar. And of course, the main use case when you create the uh, replication for applications like workloads, some of the workload sites, there's databases need, are, are going to be split like database, uh, uh, data logs, et cetera, on different shares. Uh, and when you create a replication, you pre pretty much want to make a consistent replication that you can mount on the other side uh, in case of failure. So uh, uh, this is why consistency groups are important in the context of replication, and this is something we have on the uh, plate. Um, with that, I want to thank Akshay and, and, and Tom and all of you actually staying that late and uh, uh, enjoy Tokyo and the, the rest of the summit to those of you who are staying. All right? Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much.